Hey y'all, I wanted to make a video showing some of the code that I'm working on for the first robotics competition. On this view you can see I have a chart and you'll see what that's for in a second. What this code is going to do is it's going to allow me to uh, condition the controller input, uh, the analog axes. And you can see down here this axis is the joystick axis input value and that's usually from negative 1 to 1. So when you move the joystick left and right that axis goes from negative 1 to 1 and then when you move up and down Another axis also moves from negative 1 to 1. So there's my joystick input values, and then these are the output values out of my function. And I just set up this iterative graph so I could see what the code actually does. Let me launch your work. And this is what you get normally is a 1 to 1 ratio without any processing. So when the stick is centered, you get 0. When it's 75% to the right, you get something like 0 0.75, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Now the whole point of doing this is when I was uh, playing with the joysticks, I noticed that sometimes I'd want a dead zone or maybe an offset, slight, the center is slightly off to the right or slightly off to the left, or you could also do it on the vertical axis. So if it's slightly off to the upper part or slightly off to the lower part. And another feature I had in here which I'll be playing with, which may come in handy, is a scaling type. Is by default it's linear and I'm going to try out how square root works and how also the square mapping works. And I can show you those real quick. So if I change the mapping to square root, you can see it becomes a square root graph. So if the joystick is, let's say, 50% to the right, you'll actually get around 0.7 on the output. So this I actually like most because you could get finer precision at uh, the higher end or lower and however you want to do it. And then the inverse of that would be the square. So, And then you can see this curve. So there's a lot of room in the middle where it's barely going to move. So this would be ideal for more precision on lower speeds of motors and then it would ramp up real quickly. So when you want precision on the lower end, you would use this curve instead of the linear curve. You get a lot more precision on these lower value PWMs. And then the other factors in here are a dead zone, which let me put it back to linear. What the dead zone does is it pretty much ignores any of the joystick values within a certain range. Let me set it to 0.1. And then now as you can see, when the joystick input values are between negative 0.1 and 0.1, it's ignored. The output value will be 0, as you can see here. But the second the joystick input value goes above 0.1, it starts a linear curve back up to the final value. As you can see, you still retain the full range. It still goes, the output still goes from negative 1 all the way up to 1 with every value. So you don't lose any range, you still keep all the range, you just tweak it a little bit to suit the drivers better. And now as you can see you can tweak the dead zone to whatever you want. Now this is pretty extreme if you have a <laughs> joystick that ha that you really don't want it to trigger unless you get towards the outer edges, then you may want to make it higher. As you can see here, this would pretty much ignore, ignore 50% of the middle of the joystick and then only when you get to the edges will you get an output value. I really wanted this because the way our robot is controlled when you have very small values you don't want the robot to freak out so when it's centered if you if it vibrates a little bit it'll think it's changing directions really fast and that'll uh, that's the shock on the motors so this way it has a good padding where it just ignores it and actually when we run it it'll probably be maybe five percent something like that where it's just a little dead zone and then offset is pretty much as it sounds is how far offset the center is so if the offset is 0 0.2 that means when the joystick input is 0 0.2 the output is 0 as you can see and you could combine these in any way and I'll show you some of the combinations later so right now I finally updated you could see that you still get a linear response except that the middle of the joystick is now changed. This is very useful if you have a joystick which ha which doesn't have adjustable centers. So if it's a fixed center like the new Logitech ones or some other ones or whatever you're using, this is really good if you want to uh, make sure you get a proper center. So that's why I have this in here. You may or may not need it. I probably don't think I'll be using it, but I put it in there because I figured, hey, may as well. Now, as you can see with some other
graphs once it updates. Everything still applies. So if I want a dead zone of 0 0.1, again, you could see that you still get all the output values from negative 1 to 0, and then from 0 to 1. It just ignores the center 0 point, negative 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 values in the input. So you still retain all your, all your full output. You retain the curve that you want with a nonlinear response. And offset also works the same way. So if I want to offset it by 0 0.1, let it update real quick you still retain your full output. So this will allow you to condition your values and still retain the full range, full resolution, and you still get all the output values. So you, it's not like you ignore everything in the center, as some people do, and then you don't get a low end. So if you move the joystick, if you move the joystick axis just a little bit at the start, most people just ignore it and only process it when it gets above a certain threshold. Whereas this, it actually retains your output value. So your output can still be 0 0.001, the joystick just has to be above the dead zone plus offset, as you can see in the curves. So I just wanted to show, to show you guys this. If you want uh, VIs, I have two VIs, one to uh, map values and another one to actually do all this. This is a whole VI. So if you guys want that, I could link you. If you want a better explanation, I could try to. So I just want to show you what's going on. All right, have a good day.